Hi, it's Ashton. And it's John. What up, guys? We're back from the reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to... Scary Story of the Deadly Bear. This is from the channel Jason4 Voorhees2, also our top donator. Go and subscribe, guys. Um, also, if you click the link down below in the description, streamlabs.com slash Ashton Joslin, and you guys donate $10 for that, let you pick one of the next videos to react to. Just keep it under 10 minutes. Include the video link title and your email. With that being said, let's go I'm ahead. I'm going to do this the whole video. She's cold. Cold in Minnesota. Cold in Minnesota. We have our heat at like 69 degrees right now. Mm-hmm. Because John's the scariest like... Scariest stories you've ever heard, part two. John wants it cold in here. Josh, Robert, and Brett were sophomores in high school. Best friends. Your turn. They lived in the same neighborhood and did almost everything together. I'm going to read this whole thing. Yes, you are. Here. One of their favorite things to do is to camp out in the woods at the end of their street. I read the first one. So it's half half. They would take their sleeping bags and sleep under the stars. Ooh. They love telling each other scary stories around the campfire. Who doesn't? One day, Josh and Robert were bragging to some of the kids at school about their latest camping trip. Our camping trips are great, Josh, Josh said. Of course, a lot of people might be afraid of being out there alone. You have to be a certain kind of guy. You have to be a certain kind of guy to be able to stay out there in the woods overnight. Just like just last weekend, we saw a wolf. Yeah, Robert added. Yeah, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> it was a huge wolf, and we get so close to it that we could have reached it. We could have reached out and touched it. Brett came down the hall and saw the group gathered around his two friends. <laughs> sure, he had done his share of bragging around their campouts. Should we read it like that? But this wolf story the guys were telling was a little too much. You've got to be a certain type of guy to go out there. Actually, what they had seen was a runaway German shepherd. Oh. It had been, it had a collar around its neck. Uh, oh, come on, guys. They don't need to know about all that. Do it read it like that. Brett said... You can't read that it's part. three guys going out into the woods like that. You can that. only read their voices like that. He wanted to change the subject before somebody found out they were exaggerating the truth. Then the other kids would tease them. Ooh. But it was too late. They're already teasing them. Hey! Came the voice of Andy Saber to Sr. If you sophomores are so brave, why don't you stay out of the real woods? I'll read the Stay like, out in the real woods. I'll... What do you mean, Andy? God, asked Josh. I'll read that part. You read only the talking, okay? All right. My older brother has a cabin up in Lake Montauk in the state forest. If you're so brave, then why don't you just stay there by yourselves for a night? Since you're so friendly with the wolves, you should feel right at home there. <laughs> and there's bears and cougars there, too, not to mention the state prison down the road a few miles. <laughs> I bet 25 Dollars don't spend a night in the cabin alone. <laughs> the three friends couldn't stand to hear the crowd of kids laughing at what Andy said. Brett could tell the kids didn't think they'd spend the night at the cabin. All Brett knew was he didn't really like the idea of all those wild animals outside the cabin. Plus the state prison down the road. Brett's heart skipped a beat when he heard Robert say, well, we accept. <laughs> this will be a piece of cake. <laughs> yeah, Josh added Josh. Get that $25 ready. Yeah, sure, teased Andy. It'll be a piece of cake. I like cake. Hey, I'll even drive you there myself. Brett went along with his buddies, but he still felt uneasy. After all, he knew the difference between a German Shepherd and a wolf. He, he wondered if Josh and Robert did. <laughs> Late Friday afternoon, Andy drove the three boys to the cabin. When they stopped at the gas station deep in the woods, the man at the pump saw their sleeping bags in the back of the car. Uh-oh. Be careful if you're going to be out there in the woods this weekend. The, the man said. 
The man on the radio saying that a man, the man on the radio was saying that a man escaped from prison yesterday. He's armed and dangerous. Then the man lowered his voice and looked around. Like he was afraid somebody might hear him. Who could hear him, thought Brett, so he's the one. We're all alone out here in the middle of nowhere. Courage, cowardly dog. They say the guy, they say the escape guy's a little crazy too. Said Should, the gas station man in a low voice. A little crazy too. He killed the whole family up in the northern part of the state. I wonder how much he paid these guys to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Robert whispered to Josh and Brett. I can't mess that up. <laughs> it's just trying to scare us. <laughs> yeah, answered Josh. And he's a lousy actor, too. I can't do God. that. That whispering bit is a hotkey. Hokey. They finally reached the, t- the little cabin after the long drive up a dirt road deep in the woods. It was funny you fucked that up. It sounded like he was faking it to, like, <laughs> I don't know. They got out of the car and stretched their legs. <laughs> As Andy was helping the others unload their gear, he said... Listen, you guys. I've been thinking about what the guy at the gas station said about that escape murderer and stuff. And so. And if you want to call the whole thing off, that's okay with me. Like, I understand you guys did it. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Brad started to say he was willing to call it off, but Josh butt- butted in first. Nice try, Andy. <laughs> he said... But you're still trying to scare us into not staying here. Then you'll, then you'll tell everyone at school that we chicken out like we didn't. Yeah, a Robert. <laughs> <Added> Robert. <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> Just like that thing of the guy at the gas station who told us to scare us didn't work. What are you guys talking about? Andy asked. I didn't tell him, I didn't tell him to say anything. I'm just trying to help you out if there's something dangerous up here. Well, we don't need your help, said Robert. Just be here tomorrow morning and pick us up. But don't come back too early. (laughs) We might want to sleep late, he joked. And have that $25 ready, shouted Josh. Mm-hmm. You guys are still talking big, said Andy. Don't say I didn't give you a chance to back out. <laughs> Wrong voice. <laughs> Brett, washed his, wa- Brett wished, wished his friends had him in such a big mouth to saying no to Andy's offer to leave, but what could he do now? He couldn't back out himself or his friends would never let him forget it. Before getting in his car, Andy gave Josh a flare gun. Don't let anybody in the cabin and keep the door and windows locked, he explained. And if you get into trouble, just shoot off this flare thing. I, I don't know. Somebody's bound to see it. The three boys watched the tail lights of Andy's car disappear down the dirt road in the twilight. The sun had just set over the tops of the tall pine trees. It was dark, getting dark fast. The three friends settled quickly into the cabin and started a fire to heat some of the cans of food they had brought with them. After they ate, they talked about what an easy bet they had made. They had began to plan how they were going to spend the $25 they won. Ooh, $25! We should have bet him $50, said Robert. Oh, damn it. At about 10 o'clock, the fire started to die down. The boys realized that someone needed to go out and collect some firewood in the woods. Ooh. I'll go, offered Robert. It only take a few minutes. He said, pulling on his coat. What's firewood, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two of us should go, Brett said. Brett said. <laughs> 
Remember what that guy at the gas station said? You're a chicken, hooted Josh. That was all an act that Andy set up. Don't tell me you believe it. Well, said Brett. I didn't say I believed it. <laughs> I uh, just think we should be careful. That's all or something stupid. Hey, don't, hey, don't worry about it, Bretty. <laughs> I'll go with Robert. Josh teased. I don't know why I make him sound like stereotypical girls. We'll be back and tuck you in ready for the bedtime start in a few minutes. You didn't forget to pack your teddy bear, did you? Added Robert. Robert. <laughs> Josh and Robert were laughing their heads off. And knock it off, you guys, said Brett angrily. At least take this flare gun with you. <laughs> he handed the flare to Josh. The boys went out to the of the door and vanished into the darkness around the cabin. After they had been gone for what seemed a long, like a long time, Brett started to get worried. He looked out the window, but he saw nothing. Just the faint outlines of the tall pine trees against the pitch black sky. Where are they? Brett wondered out loud. There was plenty of wood right around the cabin. <laughs> and then it struck him that Josh and Robert were trying to scare him. That's just like them, he thought. They're trying to make me think something's happened to them. You should take it over. Sorry, if there was no quotation. They think I'm a chicken. So I thought it was just text. Or... About ten minutes later, Brett suddenly heard muffled screams coming from the woods. Go ahead, you jerks. Said Brett. You can't scare me. Another fifteen minutes, Brett heard a loud pop. And the night sky lighted up. The flare! Exclaimed. exclaimed Brett. Now they're trying to get me out of there. The, but then, but he, then he heard nothing for almost an hour. His watch said it was past eleven. The joke, if it was a joke, had gone on too long. It wasn't funny anymore. Where were they? Brett had decided to open the door and call his friends. When he heard a loud, when he heard a sound outside, it was the sound of heavy footsteps thudding up towards the cabin door. There was another sound too, dragging, like something was being dragged across the gravel in front of the cabin. It was coming closer. Don't let me out there. Now Brett was terrified. He felt deep in his bones that this wasn't a joke. He knew something horrible had happened to his friends. He started to pile up against the cabin door everything he could find. The heavy wooden bed from the corner, the table and chairs, their backpacks. He had enough time to do all that. He even blew up the lantern and cow cowered near the still warm fireplace in the dark. The dragging sounds got louder and louder. When he heard a heavy thud on the front porch, he thought that it was all over for him. He tried to make himself small enough to hide in the corner of the cabin. He couldn't stop shaking. He tried to scream, but no sound would come out. And when he thought he couldn't be more afraid, he heard from behind the pile of furniture at the cabin door a scratching. The prisoners trying to get in, Brett thought in horror. Then he heard a moaning that didn't even sound human. It's a bear. Brett shrunk into the corner, expecting every moment to be his last, expecting the murderer to break in the door at any moment. 
The scratching in the morning went on for what seemed like forever. It was his friend at the door trying to get help, isn't it? Brett was too terrified to even look at his watch. Probably. All he could do was bury his hand, head in his hands to keep out the horrible sound of the escaped man trying to get in and kill him. Like he had killed Josh and Robert. Brett must have fallen asleep or fainted from fear. He woke up the next morning to the sound of a horn beeping in front of his cabin. He heard nothing else, no scratching, no moaning. He stood up stiffly from his hiding spot near the fireplace and walked to the cabin window. He saw Andy sitting in his car. He was blowing his horn and calling out Brett's name. Feeling a tremendous sense of relief, Brett began furiously cleaning, cleaning away the furniture from the door. He never wanted to spend another night in a cabin as long as he lived. Brett flung open the door and started to run towards Andy's car. Tripping over. But before Brett even stepped out of the porch, onto the porch, he saw why Andy had stayed in his car. There on the porch next to the door lay the bodies of Josh and Robert. Their heads were crushed in. And their fingers were bloody from having scratched on the door to get in. Damn. Crushed that's, the skull. Man, that's sad. You know if that was a real story? That was a good story. Um, Guys, go and subscribe to Jason for Voorhees 2 if you like that story. That was a good one. Um, Ugh. I kind of see where it was going, though. There's one or two ways, yeah. but it was pretty good. Um, Like, comment, share, and subscribe for him. Jason, if you hated the fact I was using that voice, I'm sorry, man. We did, like six of these reading ones in a row so kind of just adds a little you bit know, of entertainment it's to, because you know? they're reading ones and it's like we don't want to be so blah with them so it's kind of funny to us a little bit. right and peace out guys bye have a good time or something yeah. God.